I love traveling, but I don't like polluting our planet. That's why I always look forward to new innovations when it comes to electric vehicles. Today you and me are gonna check out everything that's new and exciting at the Stockholm eCar Expo 2023. The Volkswagen ID Series has become one of the most popular electric cars and I tried to ask one of the salespeople why that is and uh, they're actually not allowed to talk to the press. But unofficially it's because they're good looking and affordable and that it's a popular brand helps as well. Tesla was first with a very blocky design on the Cybertruck but it seems like it's spreading to other brands as well. I'm not sure how I feel about that development. Audi is popular among young petrol heads and balding middle-aged men alike, but I have to say that this Grand Sphere concept car looks pretty good. Polestar is a pretty famous Swedish electric car brand and from what I can tell it's quite popular. Polestar 3 is the latest model. It's a high-end electric car and I asked if they view Tesla as direct competitors. According to their salespeople, apparently they don't view Tesla as competitors, but they're in the same team, presumably against petrol cars. But once more, the salespeople aren't allowed to talk to the press. I wonder what they're hiding. Nah, I'm just kidding. The media communication in these multi-billion dollar industries is tightly controlled. I love these conversion projects of old cars. I wonder if anyone has converted a Volvo 240 to electric. Such a nice car, but where's the rest of it? <laughs> Thank you. It is uh, left behind. Uh, this is a moped uh, class two, so it does 25 kilometers an hour, up to 80 kilometers on a charge. And it's aimed at people who don't have a driver's license in Sweden. It is very nice. We have almost all the comfortable bits from a regular car in a tiny package. This company name, do you pronounce it AI Ways or I Ways? I say I Ways. Is it because I don't know anything about cars or is it because the company is pretty new that I haven't heard about it? Yes, I think so. It's a, it's a new company, new startup. We have been in Sweden like one year, so that's correct. What's remarkable about I Ways cars? It's how to say it's the easy way to choose like specification it's just one version of it so it's it's pretty simple for the customers so the only thing they have to choose is the color of the car people seem really interested in these cars but how do you actually pronounce the name we call it x-pain x-pain that's quite simple actually <laughs> There are four major types of electric vehicles. Battery electric vehicles, hybrid electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and fuel cell electric vehicles. The only type that's really all electric is the battery type. Batteries are used to run a motor and electricity is used to charge the batteries. Hybrid vehicles have a combination of an electric motor and a combustion engine that are used in parallel to a greater or lesser extent. Fuel cell vehicles are a bit of an odd bird because they convert hydrogen into electricity. So they have to be filled up with gas. Literally. Hydrogen gas, that is. Personally, I'm most interested in fully electric vehicles. The rest are an excellent improvement on existing designs, but it's more of an evolutionary change rather than a revolution. This is the test drive area of the show. I have to be really careful because uh, electric cars are so silent. Look at that one. It's so silent. It doesn't make any noise at all. By the way, I've created a three-star Vagabond Facebook group. If you want to discuss current or upcoming videos, please feel free to join us. 
That's absolutely adorable. Indoctrinate the kids into electric cars at an early age. Yeah. What say you do? It's a meta interview this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's interview each other. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about yeah. that dance? I, I felt it was amazing. Yeah, the performance was great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Nice work. Thank you. So, have you oh, caught your breath yet? A little bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. So, how many times per day are you doing this? Just one time per day. Just one time. Just this one was time. the one time. Yeah, it was once yesterday and once today. Now you can rest. Yes. <laughs> You just had to be there if you wanted to see it, you know? <laughs> Am I allowed to sit inside? Yes. Oh, perfect! Thank you! <laughs> this is awesome! Every child's dream, even if uh, we children happen to be 40 plus. Electric vehicles aren't a new thing. Electric cars have been around since the 19th century, but it isn't until recent years that they've started to become practical. But they're still not completely practical when it comes to travel. If you've ever been on a road trip, you know that electric cars aren't perfect for the job. It takes ages to charge the batteries, and you're constantly at risk of not finding a suitable charging station. A petrol car is unfortunately still the best option if you want to go on a long road trip, but things are changing. And there's always hybrids, of course. If you want to travel even longer distances, airplanes are really the only realistic option. And they are not electric. At least not yet. I have high hopes that we're gonna see great advances when it comes to electric cars, and also electric airplanes in the future. And who knows what else will pop up. Trains are already a valid option to travel in Europe, but maybe we'll see big improvements there as well. Pretty cool little camper, perfect for two persons and nothing else at all. This is such a cool solution for having a tent as you go, so have you lived in it yourself? Yeah, I have uh, approximately 50 to 60 nights every year in the car, on the car to be honest. <laughs> so how's the stability? I mean, it looks a bit flimsy, doesn't it? Uh, sure, but you have a plastic floor, so it's very stable here, and then you have aluminium poles, and uh, half the weight is on the ladder, and half the weight is on the car. What's the max weight uh, up there? The tent can handle 500 kilos, so the limit here is, is the roof rack. Seems like a great solution for uh, long trips on the road, basically. Yeah, it is. And it comes in different sizes and uh, configurations, depending on what you want. And this is Expedition Outdoor Days. Exactly. There's a lot of concept cars at the show. This is the new Hyundai... Hyundai... How do you pronounce that? Would you mind if I ask you a question? Uh, uh, about what? About how do you actually pronounce the company name? Hyundai. What's so smart about a smart car, really? Well, I think we. It, what's smart is that we have a premium SUV, a small SUV, and you have a. It's, it's very compact on the outside, but if you sit on the inside, everybody who's here also today, everybody is really impressed about the size of the car inside, which is of course one of the things with smart, which has always been small on the outside, but you have a very good spacious feeling. And with this one, yesterday we had the the record was uh, a guy with 186 in the back who said, "Well, this is really good," and today we had one which was 193. So so this is now the record for the day. Uh, maybe it will be more even though tomorrow, but uh, people are very satisfied when they sit in the car. This is why we're here today. This is an e-car expo, but you can see other types of electric vehicles here. Electric bikes, for example, and electric mopeds and electric motorcycles. Personally, I love electric scooters as well, you know, like the electric kick bikes. If we had kids, I'd love them just a little bit less than I love those scooters. Even though it's impossible to keep them in Stockholm, I've had two of them stolen from me. I'm a little bit curious about these electric motorbikes. What's the range of them? Uh, this is about 55 kilometers. This is 40, this is 80. What do you think? Are we ever going to see any motorbikes for a long distance travel? Depends on how the development of batteries goes. 
This is an electric motorcycle, right? The, yeah. And the range is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good range of about 150 kilometers. Wow. That's not bad at all. Do you think that's going to improve in the future as well? Yeah, hopefully we are looking to improve that. But right now we are on, uh, like you say, um, a light motorcycle. This is classified as a light motorcycle. So uh, in the future, it might even be possible that you release a heavy motorcycle good for big road trips, stuff like that? Hopefully, yeah. There's a lot, a, a lot in store, but yeah. <laughs> this is Candela, an all-electric boat, and it's flying as well. Yes, that is very true. The biggest issue uh, with boating, it's actually where the biggest inefficiency with boating is that you have the water resistance. And at the same time, battery is relatively heavy to fuel cells, so therefore you have that equation as well. And the heavier you make your boat, the more batteries you put into it, the more inefficient you're going to be because you're going to have to push more water away. So the solution to this is to add hydrofoils into the boat. We have an active hydrofoil system, meaning that the boat will take care of it all for you. We actually have relatively small batteries. We have a 69 kilowatt hour Polestar batteries in our boats. Um, and on that, you can get a range from 57 nautical miles and 22 knots, which is super impressive uh, and unheard of kind of in the industry. This is Nissan's last year model that they competed in Formula E with. And Formula E is an all-electric equivalent to Formula One. Nissan is highly involved in Formula E. Is Formula E a big thing right now? Yeah, it is. And especially for Nissan. It's a sport which we're very engaged in uh, and will be more in the future. How many countries are competing in Formula E? Do you have any idea? I don't really know the numbers, but I know it's increasing all the time. Do you think that Formula E will overtake Formula 1 at any time? Hopefully, maybe in the future. The Next Gen Cup is the world's first 100% electric junior touring car cup. What does that actually mean? It's a really exciting project, uh, the Next Gen Cup, that we've been working on for quite a few years, actually. So I'm one of the, the initiatives takers to the project. Previously, we have been running race cars all around the world, and um, we struggle with finances in, in today's today's society. You know, sustainability is high on the agenda, uh, and we also see that the young drivers that want to start a racing career also struggles. So we wanted to do something about that. So we designed, developed and tested an electric, fully electric race car. So we, we rebuilt a Mini Cooper SE, which is also an electric road car, into an electric race car. So then we decided to, to start a junior category for young drivers, so 15 to 25 year olds. And we are now building 20 identical cars to our test car. And this year we are launching Next Gen Cup as a, as a racing series for young drivers. This looks like an exciting project. What's it all about, really? Yeah, so it's a, a student project. It's a kit age from the student. Uh, we build a, a Formula car that we compete in Europe uh, against other universities, mainly from Europe in Europe. But we also have international teams coming from India and uh, America. We uh, build everything in-house, uh, so everything is made by us. We buy some parts, like the battery cells, uh, but everything is CADed and uh, made from scratch and designed by us. Uh, it's really exciting. I mentioned that electric cars aren't usable for long road trips yet. Why is that? I can't speak for the rest of the world, but at least in Sweden it's almost impossible to travel spontaneously with an electric car. And if you can't travel spontaneously, then it's not really a road trip, is it? There are plenty of charging stations all over the country, but much fewer than petrol stations. Especially if you go outside of the major cities. In the countryside you might be lucky to even find a 220 volt outlet to charge your car with. And that takes me to another of the big problems with electric cars right now. They take forever to charge. Sure, there are fast charging ports at some places, but if you want to travel long distances, that doesn't really cut it. You need to be able to charge your car quickly at many more places along the way if long distance travel is to be viable with electric cars. And speaking of charging, it's a jungle out there with lots of different charging ports and different charging apps and incompatibilities. Even if you have the right app and you're plugging in the car correctly, there are still often problems with charging stations along the way. If electric cars are to be viable for long trips, there are a few things that need to be sorted out. 
There must be a unified charging standard, so you don't have these 15 trillion competing standards right now. And of course, that unified standard needs to have very quick charging. Also, the infrastructure all over the world needs to be expanded, so you can charge your car in many more places. Until that happens, electric cars are perfect for short distances, but I'm afraid that we're gonna keep on using fossil fuels for anything longer than a couple of hundred miles. And there you have it, that was a very quick look at the Stockholm eCar Expo 2023. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now have a look at this video as well, it's gonna be right here.